album called uh, Omnivol Omnivolent 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 mm, whatever um, I mean this is a band that uh, can have a very strong Meshuggah influence and not have that gent, trendy sound to them. I mean, I love certain bands and the gent trend, but there's way too much cloning, there's way too much biting of each other's style. This band really blows all that shit out of the water in terms of taking a Meshuga influence and really going somewhere and doing some with, something with it that doesn't sound like the rest of your peers. They really do stand out in the death metal community as well as technical and progressive whatever yada yada um, I think gent bands tend to use the Meshuggah influence and really linger on the groove um, and they, they really kinda their groove is a little bit slower tempo than Anomalous because Anomalous will hold that Meshuggah style groove but they don't stay on it forever. They really change it up very quickly. It's very, a lot more ADHD, really quick, quick changing than a lot of the, um, the gent shit going around. Uh, um, their new drummer, Marco, they previously did not have a drum that used program drums. Lord Marco, as his uh, alias, I guess you would call it. I never, I had known about Lord Marco. I had kept up with him but I never really uh, looked into him too hard because a lot of I don't know there's just something about him like his uh, he's known for, as like a speed junkie especially with brain drill a lot of people criticize brain drill just being uh, pure speed um, which is fine it's fucking cool but you know that's only like one degree or one element of technical drumming and things like that but I really think he, he's the perfect drummer for this band you know, if I had any doubt before of him and his dynamic of drumming, it's been shattered. Like this, they couldn't find a better drummer to fit this album in this band. You know, he's he's got chops like no one's fucking business. We all know how fast he can play, but he really does hold different grooves. Um, you know, there's really that song writing element that people think speed loses, and I really think uh, it's perfect balance with his drumming and anomalous. Um, um, and he didn't lose that uh, mechanical sound that I really was hoping they wouldn't lose from the from the first EP, Cognitive Dissonance. Because um, with the program drums, it really added to the industrial feel, the very mechanical feel. You know, and um, adding a real drummer might have lost that effect, but it really did it. And I think it it, fit, it fits very very well. The vocalist um, Tim, uh, very excellent excellent vocalist. He doesn't have a huge dynamic. He he typically sticks to one one style and has a little ups and downs with it, but doesn't take it too far. Um, but I really think that um, his style is not um, like Cookie Monster vocals, um, but it really is a cool death metal vibe. Um, he's got like a raspy yell, which is good because it, it makes you feel like the pain or the um, um, I don't know, it's almost like a struggle, it's really like he, he invokes a certain emotion, it doesn't sound very forced, it, you know, you really kind of empathize with the vocal style. Um, this album's got a phenomenal, phenomenal jazz fusion influence that wasn't quite developed like it was on the EP, particularly track 5, uh, Mitosis I believe it's called, fucking phenomenal, it's 8 minute epic, with, I mean, it would make Pat Metheny fucking cream his pants. Like, if if Holdsworth, Metheny weren't death metal fans, they would be after listening to this album. Holy shit. Like, very, very, very impressive. 
um, you know, not just the jazz fusion thing, but they have this particular ambient um, passages throughout their songs and tracks that make them very unique and make the brutality um, give it a sense of beauty and give it, you know, like um, they, um, you know, if if the if the if the aggression was tightening and had a very hard grip, it would be like letting go of that grip briefly for these beautiful passages within the songs. Um, it's very like roller coaster ride, you know, the, the slamming, slamming, brutal groove, you know, with the crazy tech chops and the bust into like the sickest prog, prog fusion, beautiful ambience. It's really awesome dynamic. The cover art is actually very good. I'm not typically uh, a big fan of the the purely digital uh, covers because I think a lot of death metal bands don't pull it off and they look really cheesy and shitty. But this guy, I mean, his name is Fabio Listrani, Listrani, something like that. Fucking really good. Very impressive. Beautiful colors. Immaculate detail. Um, very impressed. Um, as well as you know, with the EP before that, I was, you know, the artwork looked very good, but it's always, you know, can they improve on the next release? And obviously, you know, with artwork too, they pulled it off. Um, definitely one of my top ten out of 2011. You know, we're only the third month in, definitely in the top ten. And you know, they're um, one of my favorite death metal bands. You know, there's just something about them. Um, they have the the technical prowess as well as groove and songwriting, you know, and such a big dynamic and uniqueness to them. 9.5 out of 10. I wouldn't give it a perfect score, but it's near perfect. I wouldn't give it perfect because I know um, if this band is stepping their shit up from the EP to the full length, there's definitely um, potential for them to grow even further, which I couldn't even imagine what they would do with, but, you know, I, you know, I put trust in them that they would even step up the game even more. Um, so, you know, I'll give it a 9.5 out of 10 just because I know they'll probably have room to grow, you know, but, you know, as it stands, this is like the perfect album right now. Um, yeah, pick that shit up.